Right there everyone, good morning. So today the purpose of the video is to look at the DNS lookup process. So for the past two weeks, I've been studying um, the DNS process, the lookup specifically, and we're gonna summarize that in eight steps in this video. In fact, it is kind of like an eight step process. Um, so on the 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 illustration uh, before you, you're seeing a 10 step process. That's because steps nine and 10, so that's nine and 10 here, they are the client contacting the web server after receiving the, the IP address. So, okay, let's go back to the basics. So we've got a client device here. So we've got a laptop here and the laptop is trying to access example.com. This is the web server. So I'm just circling red. The web, this is the web server that's holding ABC uh, example.com. Now, at the moment, the client device does not have the IP address of the web server. So therefore, it's going to use the process DNS to resolve for the IP address. So it does that um, via DNS server. So we've got four DNS servers. So the ones I've circled in, in fact, all of these, these are all DNS servers, and we're going to explain each of them and how each of them are, are sort of involved in the process in giving the client the IP address of the server. So the first step, <coughs> so as you can see, the first step is the client device contacting the DNS resolver. Now the DNS resolver is always the first point of contact between the client and the the uh, and the DNS infrastructure. So the DNS resolver has been contacted. And so things to remember about the DNS resolver. DNS resolver is the first point of contact. It is the one, it is the server, the DNS server that will contact the other DNS servers in order to satisfy the DNS client. Uh, so I just got some notes here. Receives queries from client machines through applications like web browsers responsible for making additional requests in order to satisfy the DNS query and it also does it caches the query as well so if it if it has something cached then it will it will not always need to contact these other servers as you see but in the example I'm going to give you we're going to give it in the worst case scenario which is none of the servers the DNS resolver the root server nor the TLD server has the record in fact it has to go to the authoritative name server so this this server here that i should have probably wrote here um uh, authoritative name server so this is the authoritative name server okay so that's the first step so the dns resolver in this case does not have the uh, the record that the client is wanting so it does not know the ip address of example.com so what it will do it will contact the 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 root server so the root server is next in line he's um the root at the top is the top of the top of the chain and the root server ultimately has 90 percent of the most 90 percent so in fact let me write that down 90 percent um of the most commonly accessed websites so 90 percent most common most most accessed websites so 90 percent. so what that means is the root server will be able to resolve for 90 percent of the queries that it receives so the root server uh, let's see what i wrote about it i wrote first step in translating human readable um, human readable address to the ip address it stores the mo commonly most common uh, com uh, commonly accessed websites so most queries um, stop at root. So that's correct. So you need to access the website. Most likely you will just need to access a root server. Um, and if it doesn't, then it serves as a reference to a more specific location. So this is sort of your general general server ho holding, let's say, the top few thousand most common, mostly common access websites. Um, and if it doesn't know the answer, it will then tell the DNS resolver. So number th step number three. So step number two asking the root server step number three the root server responding and telling the resolver that it doesn't have the answer but 
here is the location of the TLD server that potentially does so. In this example, we've got .com, so we've got a .com address, which means that the root server will point to a .com DNS TLD server. Uh, so .com TLD, so TLD stands for top level domain, which is basically the part after the dot. So as you can see, the root server is very general, but the TLD is getting more specific because now it's just a .com. So these, this, this TLD server will just have .com dot uh, com to ip addresses translations so step number four step number four um the dns resolver contacts the tld server it says have you got the record have you got the ip address for example dot com the tld server in this in this instance responds with no as you can see five and it gives the um, it gives the IP address of the authoritative name server. So in fact, I should write that there. The authoritative. I forgot to spell authoritative. Uh, authoritative. But yeah, authoritative name server. So, TLD server. So what? What I was gonna say something about the TLD server. The TLD server. Yes, TLD server will resolve nine percent. Of queries so 9% of queries will be resolved so we've got 99 and then uh, yeah we'll come to that one so 9% of queries so again um, much much less common because most com most of the websites will be resolved by the root server and if it doesn't then the TLD server will resolve 9% of them so won't need to be contacted as frequently as the root server now, in this instance, the TLD server does not have the DNS resolve, does not have the IP address. So it, res it tells the DNS resolver that I don't have it. Um, so the DNS resolver then contacts the, what we call the authoritative name server. Now, authorit authoritative name server is the final, what can be said is the final source of truth. And this is because the authoritative name server does not need to contact any other server. It is in fact, it is, and in fact, um, these are built as databases. So this is a massive database of translation and it will know the answer. It will know DNS. It will know the IP address to the host name and it will have the record. Now for that reason, as you can imagine, these are massive databases. For that reason, the authoritative name server is contacted very less frequently in fact v not at all so less than a percent of a percent so we'll write there we'll write a percent but in reality it's less than a percent of the percent of the time of, 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 of time that the authoritative name server is contacted so bear that in mind that that really helped me to understand uh, when, when i was learning it just a few weeks ago it really helped me to understand um the sort of the hierarchy of the dns infrastructure so DNS Resolve, remember, is the one that talks to everyone. Um, and then these three servers that we have here, these are, uh, we've got a hierarchy going. So 1% of the time, the authoritative name server. Um, now, just a question, just c c consider, if the authoritative name server, authoritative name server, was contacted multiple, uh, was contacted more than 1% of the time, think how much load it would um, and stress it could cause on the name server. So it makes sense to have this as a final source of truth and to use it very less frequently. So, um, yep. Yeah. So in this instance, okay. So no, step number seven. So step number seven here. Looking at step number seven. the It has the name record for example.com.com. It then tells the DNS resolver, yes, I know the IP address for example.com. The DNS resolver will then inform the client. So the client is a web browser. And now the client has the IP address. So we've got the IP address now. So we've got the IP, got the IP address. And now steps nine and 10 is the HTTP request. So pretty simple. Uh, obviously that's probably for another video. HTTP, the, uh, the web browser now, example.com, the client can make the HTTP request because it knows the IP address. And remember, in the HTTP request, you are required to type the IP address of the server. And that's step number nine. 
and then the server responds with the with the web page and the web browser renders the the web page and um we've got mr bob here in fact mr mr keith got mr keith he's someone who helped me understand this process mr keith he und he can see example.com because it's been rendered so that's my little simple explanation of the um dns lookup um that's yeah that's what i've got so far if there's anything that i've missed or crucial details that are important for learning please do pop them in the comments um, thank you for watching